Hey everyone, it's Jason. Welcome to another unboxing for Red Dragon Inn. This is part of the Allies set, which are um, not standalone sets, just extra characters. So the big box sets, uh, sets like 1 through 8, or um, whatever they're up to at the point of this video, um, are you can buy each big box set by itself. It has at least 4 characters, and you can play the game. It has all the stuff you need to play as those. Uh, these ones, however... Um, you can't play by themselves. Well, you can and you can't. I shouldn't say that. You can play by yourself if you buy this one because it's a two-player set. So you could play two players versus each other. Um, if you bought two two players, you could potentially play a score. Um, with the exception of I don't think they have drink cards. So that's the only thing they're missing. They have two characters. You just don't get all the drink cards with it. So you really need to you need at least one deck to play those. Um, but you can play each of these characters fairly independent. So if you have... Um, yeah, so if you have the set of drink cards, you can play with anyone. So you only need, need one box, set, I guess. Um, so in components, we are going to get some more gold. Um, plus some counters to work for your character. Um, so they started using these tokens instead of the little counters, but... You know, whichever you want to use. Uh, we will get... Ooh, and they're falling out. We will get some dividers for the set 5. The treasure troll, which is a box set. Um, and we'll get the fun uh, player cards, which the original ones didn't have. Um, again, those were in set 5. Um, the treasure troll set added those. So... I didn't actually read the name of this set. This is Keek and Nitro. Uh, so we're going to get two goblin characters, which are really cool. Um, and they're going to have their own different effects. So I'm not going to go over too much on in the instructions. We're just kind of looking at the decks as we go. It just explains how each one works. Um, and then how they work with some of the other characters and rules and specific card notes. Um... But yeah, right, let's just jump in and start looking at these characters. So we'll start with Keek the Treasure Hunt Hunter. And now they're going to have a little A up in the top corner, which is going to signify that they're allies. Versus each regular box has the number for what set it is. Set 1 has 1, set 3 has set 3. Um, yeah, then they started making these nice sheets on here. So you have your Fortitude and your Alcohol Counters. Your deck, discard, and drink me. Just a little player boards. Plus, some of these characters, like him, have special um, uh, card decks and stuff. So, this helps keep track of all that. So, he has his face-down artifacts, his face-up artifacts, and his discarded artifacts. Just so you have, like, extra little piles to know where to put stuff. So, while you're playing as his cards, you'll have your normal deck kind of sitting like this you'll have your discarded cards like this and then if you have drinks you can put them there then when he's playing his artifacts you'll have his keys artifact that you can stick over on the side here and if you have face up ones or discarded over there it's just a nice way to help keep track of that um especially for players that maybe aren't as familiar Alright, so Keep the Treasure Hunter has some very, he's a very interesting um, gameplay. So he has two decks of cards. He has his normal Keep the Treasure Hunter Goblin Archaeologist set um, of cards. Then he also has Keats Artifacts. So on the back of each artifact is a picture of a gold. Um, so he doesn't start with any gold. So they have rules on the back here. Um, so it says, shuffle the artifact deck instead of starting the game with 10 gold or 8 or 12, depending on the number of players. He starts with that many face down artifacts. So he gets these cards instead of artifacts. And as long as they're face down, they're treated as a piece of gold, which he can use for anking, gambling, spending for whatever he needs to. Um, and then if something goes in to reveal a card, he flips it up, he puts it in his stash. Um, the trigger actually acts immediately if it's not it stays there until he uses it um other players can gain these as well versus other effects 
Um, if they gain it face down one, they immediately turn it face up. Like if he anties it as gold and someone wins it, uh, they get that artifact, they flip it over, they do it, and it gets discarded. Um, a player is not kicked out of the tavern unless they have no gold and no artifacts. So, since he doesn't have any traditional gold, he can still keep his artifacts and keep using them. But he can also gain gold other ways. Other players can give him gold, and they, you know, so he can gain uh, regular gold as well. Alright, so let's look at his regular deck. So we're going to have our cards that are in just about every game. I'm not going to go over how to play or any of that. You want to see that, check out my first video. Uh, here we're just going to kind of focus on what's in the deck. One, two, three, four, five. We have our six cards of Gambling I'm In. So every player get pretty much every player gets to be either five or six. Uh, start a round of Gambling or take control of a round of Gambling. We have two copies of I Raise. Take control of a round of Gambling. Each player, including you, must ante. Two copies of Winging Hand. Take control of a round of Gambling. The next card must be a Cheating card. He has his I Don't Think So card. Uh, Negate a Sometimes card. Can only be affected by other than other I Don't Think So. We have Tip the Wench. Pick a player, they pay the gold one in. Uh, the Wench thinks you should stop playing with drinks. Negate a Sometimes card that challenges or changes the effect of a drink. Um, and then it can only be affected by I Don't Think So. And two copies of Wench. Bring some drinks for my friends. Uh, these are the common cards that are pretty much in every single person's deck. Um, there are slight variations on some of these, but they're generally the same. Um, so you get the same effects as sometimes when games change a little bit. Um, and then a lot of these other, some of the other cards are, are very similar like that. With what's up your sleeve? Take control of a round of gambling. Pick another player and force them to leave the round of gambling. He has two copies of Not Now. Research requires a clear head. Ignore a drink, and then reveal an artifact. Let me take a closer look at that. Pick another player, they give you an artifact of your choice. This counts um, as affecting their gold. Or, pick another player, they pay you one gold, they may not pay you with an artifact. Uh, Eureka, this must be reveal an artifact. I love that a little wink. Um... Throw the, throw the idol. All right, you asked for it. Uh, pick another player that was three fortitude. If they lose fortitude this way, give them an artifact of your choice from your stash. If you have no artifacts, give them one gold instead. For your safety, use protection when handling strange artifacts. You may pay this card after a player gains gold or an artifact. That player loses two fortitude. Two copies of Don't Call Me a Grave Robber. Pick another player, they lose two fortitude. Two copies of Not the Ears. Ignoring artifacts, sometimes card that affects your fortitude. I'm selling this one to a sucker. Uh, I mean a collector. Discard an artifact, gain two gold from the ing. If you have no artifacts, gain one gold from the ing instead. Two copies of sometimes an important dig yields nothing but piles of gold. You may play this when you are about to lose gold. Use gold from the ing rather than your own stash. This whip isn't just for show. Pick another player, they lose two fortitude. Oh, is it my turn? I'm a little distracted. Take control of a round of gambling, revealing artifact. I'll take that. You may play this card immediately after another player discards an artifact or uses it to pay the ing. Take the artifact and add it to your stash. Two copies of Oops! Looks like that was booby trapped. Pick another player, they lose two fortitude. Reveal an artifact. Two copies of Ouch! Look what you made me drop. You may play this card immediately after you lose fortitude from a card played by another player. You may not play this card if you reduce that fortitude loss. That player loses one fortitude. If they lose fortitude this way, which is a face down artifact, if you have one, you may give it to that player or keep it. If you keep it, reveal it. Uh, don't bother me. This is very delicate. 
When you play this card, when you must empty. Instead of emptying, you must leave a round of gambling. Or ignoring action, sometimes your any time card affects your fortitude, alcohol, content, or gold. You won't believe how I got this one. You regale the others. Each player pays you one gold. I wonder where this tanker was made. Ignore one drink. And to toast a lightly guarded loot. Split a drink you're about to drink with another player. Alright, so that's his main deck of cards. Then let's look at his artifacts. So we have the Gleaming Gen of Inebriation. So it's a static effect. So when it plays, it automatic it stays out um, and does stuff. Whenever you would gain alcohol content from a drink, gain one in is increased by one. The drunker you are, the prettier it gets. We have a rusted nail, which is a triggered immediately after you gain control of an artifact. Uh, or your turn, turn it face up, lose one fortitude. If you gain control and immediately turn it face up, you lose one fortitude, not two. Ouch. <laughs> uh, Philosopher's Stone. The start of a round of gambling, each player, including you, anties two gold instead of one. Let's up the stakes a bit. A Medal of Revel Revelry. Uh, immediately after a player gains three or more alcohol content from a drink, that player gains this artifact. If two or more players gain three or more alcohol content at the same time, you choose which gains this artifact. To those about to pass out, we salute you. A timepiece of temporal, temporal translocation. Your turn ends now. Do not order a drink or or drink. Until the beginning of your next turn, you may not play cards, you ignore all effects, and players may not pick you when a card effect is asking to pick a player. Excuse me a moment. A bent coin has no effect. It's just a little bent. It's still good. It's still good. Earn of earning. Immediately after you turn this face up, gain one gold from the end. A place to keep your hard-earned gold. Talisman of ten. Temperance. You may play this card immediately after you gain alcohol content. Lose two alcohol content. Well, that's a sobering artifact. A box of banishing. Ignore a drink. Ooh, mystical. Ancient suit string. No effect. This has a great cultural significance. Helm of the great grandfather. Um. This is Gimli's great-grandfather's helmet, which in another card he mentions how he lost. Ignoring artifacts sometimes or anytime's card that affects your fortitude. Just how many great-grandfathers did you have, Gimli? Because uh, I think he keeps losing so many helmets. Uh, primitive knuckle bones. Take control around your gambling. The older they are, the luckier they are. Uh, rabbit's foot with Pookie. Not very happy about this one. Immediately after you turn this artifact face up, lose two fortitude. You may reduce or ignore fortitude as long as it came from an action card. Pookie is unamused. We have the Holy Grail. Add the effect of gain two fortitude to a drink. Hmm. Sanctalicious. The Picture of Plenty. You may play this card during the order of drink phase of your turn. Order two additional drinks for free. For when the wench is too busy. The Lodestone of Legend. Immediately after you lose this art after you lose this artifact, draw two cards from your character deck. Um, this includes Anthony's artifact, paying for the ink or paying for another player when it's face up. Well that's a load off my shoulder. The cursed idol of doom, never you lose fortitude. That loss is increased by one. Doom. And the final artifact is the Scorpion Brooch. Pick another player that is 3 fortitude. Don't touch the pretty end. Um, that's actually really cool because there's so many cards that they're all different. They could have picked like, made like 5 of them and just made them all the same. Um, but I'm glad that they made a bunch of different ones. Alright, our next player is Nitro the Scrapper. So, you know, she doesn't have any other special bonuses around the outside. Um, but she does have a secondary deck as well. Um, but she plays very different. 
So, Night Trailer Scrapper has a special bombs deck. Um, shuffle the bomb deck, put it in the table. Bomb. Many of the next cards specify that a player gets a bomb. When a player gets a bomb, there's a top card of the bomb deck, carries out effect and discards. Effect from bombs may be reduced, negated, ignored, or responded as though they were an action card played by Nitro. So here's the back of our card. Nitro the Scrapper, a Goblin Bomber. And then there is her bombs deck, which we'll look at second. One, two, three, four, five. So we have five copies of Gambling I'm In. Two copies of I Raise. Two copies of Winning Hand. Two copies of Wench Bring My... Bring Some Drinks From My Friends. Uh, the Wench thinks you should stop playing with the drinks. Tip the Wench. And then I Don't Think So. So again, the same kind of cards that are in every deck. And then we have two copies of... Self-propelled fighting bomb. Pick another player, they lose one fortitude and get a bomb. Two copies of Don't worry, they're perfectly safe. Pick another player, they get a bomb. Two copies of Be careful or someone will get hurt. Pick another player, they lose two fortitude. Boom. Well at least we know that one wasn't a dud. Each other player loses one fortitude. Two copies of did you forget that I blow stuff up? You may play this card immediately after you lose Fortitude from a card played by another player. That player gets a bomb. Safety gear is expensive. Help a goblin out. Pick a player, they pay you one gold. Two copies of Explosive Gold Piece. You may play this card when you're about to lose gold. Pay it with a face down bomb instead. If your player gains that bomb, reveal it and take its effect. If the in gains a bomb, discard it. Uh, let's see. One, two, three, wait. Where's number four? Pick another player, they gain a bomb. I buy potions in bulk from Frank. Gain two fortitude. You call that a winning hand? Mine's dynamite. Take control of Ronald Gambling. Add a bomb to the pot face down. The winner of the wrong of Gambling gets a bomb and takes its effects. Um, can I get some new cards? Take control of the round of gambling. Switcheroo. Take one gold from the pot during the round of gambling. Replace that gold with a face down bomb. The winner of the round of gambling gets the bomb and takes its effect. Quick, try putting it out with this. Ignore a drink, pick another player, they gain a bomb. Two copies of So That's for My Exploding Coaster Wank. Ignore a drink. Two copies of this drink could use a cherry bomb. Uh, when you play this card after you reveal a drink with possible chasers, instead of its usual effects, the drink has the effect we through fortitude. Any non-drink cards that change this drink effects is still affect it normally. Two copies of smoke bomb. Ignore an action card. Sometimes or anytime card that affects your fortitude, alcohol content, or gold. May not use this card during our round of gambling. Uh, lucky for me, I was wearing my heavy duty blast gear. Ignore an action sometimes or anytime card that affects your fortitude. And finally, I would avoid unnecessary risk. You may play this card when you must ante. Instead of ante, you may leave the round of gambling. Then our bomb cards are. Pot of Boom. Lose 3 Fortitude or pay 1 gold to the end to pass this bomb to another player. The Blam at the end of the rainbow. Uh, Spitfire Spinner. Each player other than Nitro loses 2 Fortitude. Great for celebrations and crowd control. Bing Bada Boom. Lose 4 Fortitude or discard your hand. Uh, you may choose to discard even if you have no cards. Warning, not for indoor use. Combustible Clockwork, lose 3 Fortitude or discard card from your hand to pass this bomb to another player other than Nitro. Tick, 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 boom. The Three-Headed Hydra, lose 3 Fortitude, you may discard the 3 cards from your hand to reduce this by 1 for each card you discard. 
you should see the nine Hager Hydra. The Pixie Dust Bomb, Genku Oko Tank. Just a bit of Pixie Dust and you can fly. Backfire. Night Curse uses one Fortitude. Ouchie. The Exploding Coaster, who is three Forter card, discard your top card of your drink me pile. Amuse your friends and surprise your enemies. Drink Explosion, discard your top four cards of the drink deck each player, other than Nitro gains one alcohol content. Excuse me, wench, our drinks went all explodey. Um, we're going to get two copies of Firecrackers, just who is one Fortitude. Uh, festive but dangerous. We're going to get two copies of Greater Firecrackers. Uh, lose two forti Fortitude. Dangerous but festive. Uh, the Goblin Candle. Uh, pick another player. You and the chosen player lose two Fortitude. Burns at both ends. Uh, excavation Charge. Lose one Fortitude and pay one gold to the end. The wench demands that you pay for damages. Uh, the Twin Popper. You and Nitro each lose one Fortitude. Warning. Do not point towards or away from self. And then finally, two copies of Dud. No effect. Uh, where's the Earth Shattering Kaboom? Alright, so that was what we had. Now, that's all we got in that set. Um... Not a lot of stuff, but two extra characters. Buying extra little decks, the bombs affecting everybody. Um, and then the uh, Keychain's Artifact, where it counts as gold. And sometimes you play it, sometimes you don't, depending on what you want to do. That's actually really fun as well. Um, and then also the fact that you don't use the entire deck every time. You might come across different stuff each time. It's kind of fun. Oh yeah, so moving for some new characters are very interesting. These guys definitely have some neat gimmicks to them. Um, and then, I just wonder. So, I have a sweeved card here. Will a sweeved card fit into this box is what I like to find out. Yes and no. Um, so I have a Guardians of the Galaxy card here from our legendary... So I use penny sweeps. Um, as you can see, it does fit in there. Um, but it's going to be kind of tight on the top and bottom. I mean, it still does fit. It just kind of bends it a little bit. But if you have tight sweeps, they'll fit. So it's always nice to point out these boxes will fit sweep cards if you have them. Alright, that is what we got for Keaton Nitro. Check out the rest of my videos. See you guys later. Bye.